Hello and welcome to this webinar today. My name is Stephen Small and I want to thank you just for taking the time to have a quick look at what I've got to show you. Um, I was recently at a, in Latvia making a presentation to the combined Russian and Latvian medical rehabilitation societies and the presentation I was making was looking at the key differences between non-surgical spinal decompression and how it overcomes the limitations and shortcomings of traditional mechanical traction. I'm not going to go through the whole presentation today. Um, I just wanted to illustrate one part of it, and that is relates to um, the way in which spinal decompression distracts targeted spinal segments. And so I'm just going to show you a few slides which I hope will clarify this point um, more clearly. If you don't know me, um, this is me. Um, I, as I say, it's Stephen Small. If you've got any questions um, and want to um, receive any of the papers that I may reference, then please uh, do not hesitate to uh, contact me either by email or, or, or give me a call. Um, okay, so typical traction table, um, traction in, in certainly in the UK is not commonly used. The Cochrane Review um, which looks at all the available evidence shows that traction as a modality um, is not recommended for, um, for for low back pain um, and this is a sort of device that most people maybe have been familiar with uh, a simple table with a, uh, a sort of pulling uh, force um, at, at the end and the modern spinal decompression uh, devices this one is called uh, an acuspiner um, they have some elements which are comparable to traction in as much as there is a pulling force but what lies behind the um, you know the, 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 the computer with the, the nuts and bolts of what this treatment does make it drastically different from um, traction and the elements as I say I'm going to focus on it relates to um, the ability to distract targeted segments and, and the way in which we do that. Um, spinal decompression, this question, there's a number of papers um, which uh, are, are on, on this subject, but I suppose the, the key one was um, uh, um, relates to a study done in 1997, um, a single blind RCT comparing spinal decompression to traditional traction by a guy called Norman Sheely, um, who was a uh, highly respected surgeon. Um, and he took two groups of patients with common conditions and essentially gave a similar treatment. However, with the spinal decompression, he used varying angles of force application up to 30 degrees rather than a single, uh, rather than a single point um, and a number of other factors. But the key thing is what he was able to observe was Oh, using fluoroscopy that the ability to distract targeted segments um, and he actually measured a seven millimeter distraction at L5. What he further saw was that by altering the angle of application of a force and the amount of distraction you were able to open um, different um, spinal segments in a way that previously hadn't been observed. And as far as the results of this study, 86% um, of patients treated with decompression for disc herniation had good to excellent results, whilst only 55% of conventional traction papers, patients had good result and, and none had an excellent outcome. But the key here, I want to get a, this one component of it, this, uh, this measuring uh, the angle at which a force is applied and the effect that that can have. Now, the origin of that is um, from uh, the, taken using vectors, um, but as far as the actual administration of this treatment, I just wanted to show you an example of one of the patient. Um, the ability to um, mobilize and distract targeted segments opens up new possibilities to help with um, improving uh, disc health, and this is just one example. Um, which, uh, which I'd sort of slipped in from the Journal of Neuroimaging. Um, but as far as the, the application of the force, we're going to look at the measurement of the angle. Here we have a protocol um, for an, an L5S1 treatment where there's a specified angle of distraction. And, and, and this is kind of like the first time that a series of protocols have been written down, not 
hard and fast but I would say more as a guideline you've got a point of reference from which to uh, start so here we have a, an example this is a physiotherapist and and the device uh, very simple if I can get my mouse there this is a uh, an inclinometer and by raising this decompression head very precisely within increments of sort of five degrees can have a, a significant bearing on um, where uh, where the point of application of a given force um, is applied so ve illustrating this with vectors um, essentially you have a, a y-axis and the x-axis and we're concerned with the angle of pull now if we pull along the we can pull um, in a in a vertical direction and, and I tend to think of a, um, a dog on a lead we can pull it backwards or we can pull it upwards and it will move accordingly now as we increase the angle uh, the pulling force makes with the horizontal the component element of the force the horizontal force will decrease and the vertical component of the force will increase and the effect of that is to move the point of application of force along the x-axis as you further increase that angle then again the y component of the force increases even more and the x um, component uh, decreases and so the point of application moves further along the x-axis and this is all um, referenced in any sort of physics um, physics text um, undergraduate physics text would uh, would illustrate this now the significance of this from the spine and decompression is that okay here we can see a pulling force acting on a horizontal but as we saw previously, when you change the angle of the pull, then the point of application of that force moves along the x-axis. And if a patient is lying supine with their knees bent to flatten the lordotic curve, this can focus that force at a specific level. It might not be 100% at that level, but the majority of that force is going to be around... Uh, around a given point along that x-axis which corresponds to a segment of the spine and so this help enables us to distract specific segments which is what Dr. Sheely observed in his um, study back in 1997 and as you further increase that angle again we know from the physics that the point of application of the force moves further along the x-axis and with respect to the spine that for that application enables us to further open the, uh, the the targeted spinal segment and then and so on it it, it goes um, up to about 30 degrees um, to, to, to distract the, the, the specific segments so this is this is one element of of spinal decompression how the force is actually applied is is another area which I'll I'll, I'll, I'll show in another um, short uh, demonstration but um, just wanted to illustrate that point and I hope that's uh, answered some questions if and if it's raised any questions um, then then please do get in contact with me my name is Stephen Small um, and here's my contact details thank you very much for listening uh.